40-year problem in this region. We've spent at least 40 years talking about it, fussing about it, fighting about it, sometimes cussing about it. And we still don't have transit. 40 years ago, that argument started. 80 years ago, we had the issue of the here in Clinton Metro Parks formation and the whole idea of should we spend Detroit dollars for uh, issues that would be outside of the city of Detroit? I mean, is this, does this make sense? That Detroit would subsidize the regional metro parks? We got it right that time. We decided, yeah, it makes sense for the region. And so we voted for uh, a regional here in Clinton Metro Parks for green space for recreation in the region. Makes sense. I think now we all look back on it and say, yeah, that was a wonderful thing that we did. The only thing is in that case, it was Detroit doing the arguing about subsidizing. You hear about subsidizing all the time. Now the argument is transit will subsidize Detroit. The truth of the matter is transit doesn't subsidize Detroit. What transit does is subsidize routes, and routes are where people go, and where people go is where the routes are, and that's where the dollars should be spent. So, uh, you know, it's kind of the hater aid, gator aid argument. If people are coming to Detroit, they're coming to Detroit, and transit takes them there. It's a data-driven process. It's a process that it flows where people go. There's a, there's a myth uh, with respect to uh, transit that I'm hearing an awful lot now, and that, you know, in fact, I heard the other day, I think my friend in uh, Oakland County mentioned the fact that we have standalone economies, that Oakland is a standalone economy. It doesn't need Detroit to survive, which is kind of like saying I'm not really a part of the region, really. But we are, and it's not true. There are no standalone economies. As an example, in the city of Novi, 83% of the people who work in Novi live outside the Novi city limits. And of the people in, who live in Novi who work outside of Novi, guess where the number one destination for them to work is? You can probably guess it, Detroit. And so we are intertwined, we're joined at the hip. The economy doesn't stop at eight mile and it doesn't start at eight mile. That's a myth we've gotten into for a long period of time, but it's just that, it's a myth. We go across eight mile all of the time. Money flows across, people flow across, back and forth. Amazon told us we're behind the curve in transit. Others have told us that, but Amazon's told that told us that very clearly. Foxconn told us no Detroit. The US Army told us no Detroit. They didn't always say transit, but they say things like livability. They would say things like ability to move talent. And really, in essence, what is that? That's transit. It's all interrelated with transit. So we're behind the curve, and we need to know it. Another myth that I think we hear all of the time, and we hear it more and more now because as the clamor for transit grows from neighborhoods, from transit organizations, from employers, from CEOs, as the sound starts beating, now the more obtuse excuses and myths come up. One of them is what I call the Hobson's choice. We can only have one or the other. We can have roads or we can have transit. We can have smart or we can have the RTA. But we can't have them both. It reminds me of that old, uh, I think it was Ace Trucking Company. You can call me Ray, you can call me Jay, but you doesn't have to call me Johnson. Do you remember? <laughs> it's, it's that, which, which where are we? Um, why does it have to be one? Why does it have to be roads instead of transit? Or why does it have to be transit instead of roads? The reality is it's got to be both. 
We pay less in this region than anywhere in surrounding regions for both transit and for roads and infrastructure. And most of us know you pay for what you get, you get what you pay for. Understand, too, when, when you hear these strange discussions now about SMART versus RTA, understand that they're talking about a renewal millage for SMART. Renewal millage means we get to keep the same inadequate system that we currently have. I'm totally in support of the renewal millage for SMART. Why not? Nobody wants to go backwards. It's important that we support SMART. But we got to support RTA too. And if RTA has the ability to do what it needs to do, it too will support SMART. SMART's a great organization. But SMART has opt-outs. And when you have a region, you can't have a region with donut holes in it. You got to have a region or you don't. We need both. We need roads and transit. We need RTA. We need SMART. If I never got on a bus in my life, I would support transit. And I would support transit because it is good for our region. Not everything has to be personally good for me. It's good for the region if it helps to connect people with opportunities. If it helps mobility in this region, it helps me. And there will be a residual benefit to me and everybody in this room, whether we use it or not. That's when you think regionally. If we can't think regionally, we've got a problem. For every $1 that's invested in transit, studies have shown, brings you $4 in return. That's a business decision. That's a good business decision. And public transit connects people. What's more important in a growing region than being able to con connect people? Why we're having this problem right now is pure politics. And it's not just the issue of some being for and some being against transit. It's really about whether or not some of my colleagues will allow transit to even get on the ballot. You can be against it, but let voters vote for it. The DIA, the zoo, Cobo Hall, none of those have opt-outs. We support them all because they're good for the region. They bring benefit to all of us. Why not transit? I'd love to opt out of the I-75 expansion, but I can't. But more importantly, I shouldn't be able to either. Not everything has to be for me. Besides the myths, what's another issue? Race. Yeah, I said it. Race is an issue in transit. But I will say this to all of you. In this region, there are far more saints than there are sinners. We can overcome it. If we overcome it on the business decision, we can overcome it. The old eight-mile adage is no more. We're one region. We need to act like we're one region. When we say Detroit or our region versus everybody, that's a sign of pride. That says we're trying to do something as a region, and we're proud of the rebirth of our city. What we act like on transit is Detroit or the region versus ourselves. We fight, we argue. That's no good for progress at all. What's good for Detroit is not bad for the suburbs. I took a bus ride, two and a half hours, two mile walk to try to get to a location in Novi. I learned something from that walk. First of all, the buses are slow as heck. And second of all, I'm not the walker I used to be. <laughs> and the roads that I walked were not safe for people to walk. We have to, in this region, understand that we've got to do better with transit. We've got to allow it at least to get on the ballot.
There are influence makers here in the house. Many of you are. Let's get this thing moving. It's been 40 years. We don't have a lot of additional time. People are telling us we're not the region we could be because we don't have transit. I implore you to get on the stick with me and make this issue one that at least we get on the ballot. If people don't want to vote for it, fine. If leaders don't want to support it, then say you don't support it. But let the people vote. Let the people decide this is a critical issue. Thank you for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, this session is sponsored by PNC Bank. There is a deal to be made there.